Good morning, YouTube. Welcome to the workshop. Today I've got something different planned for you. I'm not doing a guitar video and I'm not doing painting today. We are, however, in my workshop. I've cleared out some of the guitar stuff and I bought a new to me vehicle back in October and for Christmas I got a bunch of stuff to upgrade the stereo and speakers and add a backup camera stuff like that and what I want to do because it is I think today is January 18th or so and it is snowy and cold and we're supposed to get several more inches of snow over the weekend so it's going to be a while before I can put all this stuff in the vehicle, but I want to make sure everything works. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to bench test everything, the radio and the backup camera and all that kind of stuff, and I'm going to emulate the, the settings that, that we have in the vehicle as far as constant power, switched power, and reverse light power and I'm going to set all that up and show you maybe this will kind of help you if you're in that same situation and I'm going to test I've got here just a power supply for a computer that um, just a, an old computer that I recycled everything with the computer except for the power supply and I'm not interested in the brand but I'm going to use the power supply to test everything because the this particular power supply and there's a typically a label on on them and my particular one supplies of course the uh, computer power supply computer stuff is what I've done my whole life but computer power supply sends on a, on the DC side output side of things will send out 3.3 volts 5 volts and 12 volts and of course 12 is the same as your car battery so you could do the same thing if you had an extra battery lying around and you wanted to you know set a battery up and connect everything to the battery it would accomplish the same thing I'm just going to use power supply and I'm going to show you how to do that because I've watched some videos and stuff there seems to be some confusion but uh, of how to make these work outside of being plugged into a computer motherboard and all of that so it's very very simple I'm going to show you how to do that uh, but this particular power supply is rated for uh, it says it's a 500 watt power supply but if I come out here here to the max it's rated if we did 3 volts 3.3 volts or 5 volts it's rated at 130 watts 12 volts is rated at 480 and the amps is rated on the 12 volt side at 15 amps so we have 12 volts 15 amps from this particular power supply and that is going to be plenty of power to run what we need so I've got a couple of things here on the bench that you're going to need and I'll what I'll also do is I'm going to overlay a picture of the layouts there's typically on this is the the part of the power supply that plugs into the computer motherboard and this one happens to be a 24 pin and as I mentioned it's an older one so it actually has colored wires a lot of the newer ones the wires are actually shrink wrapped all the way into this connector but the pinouts are the same and I'm going to overlay a shot of the pinout diagram and whether you in some of them are if you have a really old power supply it would only be a 20 pin but it's the same the, to make this work basically there's a power on jumper in this connector here that gets wired to the motherboard which goes back to the power switch on the computer so you hit the power button on the computer and it comes on and it all that power switch does is the same thing that we're going to do on this side of the connector so every power supply will have this little push connector that once you 
plug this in the motherboard, this snaps over the edge, and then when you want to take it out, you push on this. So face that toward you. And again, I'm going to overlay the graphics so you'll see what I'm talking about here. But if you just lay this pin toward you, and then you count from the left side on the top, one, two, three, the fourth wire, the fourth pin, connector, wire, whatever you want to call it, that's the power on jumper. And you just need to jumper that to a ground wire in the power supply. And on a 24 pin power supply, I believe there's seven or eight different ground wires. Any of them will work. And what I've done is I've taken just this is a paper clip and it's it's a big paper clip and way bigger than I need but I'm just gonna have it off to the side so it's not gonna get in my way at all and here's how this works you just take the paper clip I use the big one because it slides into the connector stays fairly snug in there and then if you go back back the video up a little bit and pause and look at the pinouts you'll notice that on let's see one two three four so there's my pin out for or my power on pin for the power supply on either side so number three or number five either one of those is a ground and you'll see that on the the pin out if you go back and look at the graphic and pause the video and, and look at that and what I've done I've just bent this paper clip in such a way as I'm going to put it in I'm going to use pins four and five and I don't know that's the exact number but I'm from the top where the connector is I'm gonna count over one two three four and five and those are the two that I'm gonna jumper together and that's all there is to it and you know you could make something smaller fancier or whatever but any of these ground wires will work so if you're seeing the different colored wires if you have one that's colored black is always ground and I think on a computer uh, pinout chart they list them as common com common that's your ground so any of these black wires are ground or common wires and that will work and also on older power supplies typically the power on is green so if you just jumper those two together now that that will allow the power supply to work the actual on off switch on the back of the power supply will work now I'm gonna put that around to the side because we don't need that little connector anymore and I've got my multimeter and I'm gonna turn that on and you can see in the camera there hopefully you can see that, that we have zeros across the board in the power supply connector the one side will be a power the middle two are ground and then the other side is power one is 12 volts and one is 5 volts so I'm gonna take my red lead plug that into one of the end connectors take the black lead and plug that into one of the middle two connectors so can you see how I've done that there this one's on the end and we're just going to test this to make sure that it works so I'm going to check the camera make sure that you're seeing what I'm seeing can you see that says zero and right now the power supply is in the off position I've got the power cord this I saved from the computer as well I'm gonna plug that in which will give power to the power supply which will in turn send power down this way now I'm gonna turn it on now this particular power supply that I'm using happens to have uh, LEDs in the fans so you're gonna see immediately when it comes on and then if I bring the meter up here so you can see that we've got 12 
actually 12.3, but we've got 12 volts. Now if I take the power connector and I put it on the other side, that'll be 5 volts, which we don't need, but just so you see that the power supply is functioning correctly. So 5, actually 5.13 is where it's sitting at right now, and I think I can get you in the light, yeah, so you can see that. So that's all there is to using a computer type power supply for bench testing because what we need is 12 volts. In my particular case, the yellow wire is 12 volts, black is ground, and then the red wire there is five. So we're not gonna use five. I've gone ahead and cut one of the connectors off so I can just use, some people will pop these out of here in this particular one, uh, it was just easier for me. I'm not gonna reuse this in a computer, so it was just easier for me to snip these. But we're gonna use 12 volts. The power supply on switch, the way it is right now, is going to be our constant 12 volt power for our radio. And then I'm gonna run 12 volt to a switch for the switched power like you turn the key on in your car that's switched power for a radio and then I'm going to run 12 volts to a different switch for reverse lights so when I turn that switch that's like putting your car in reverse to turn on the rear camera so let me get set up I, ju I just wanted to show you really quickly and it's a, just a super simple process of making and bring this up here a little bit closer so you can see but <coughs> excuse me super super simple process of making a power supply work when it's not plugged into a computer you just take again take the 20 or 24 pin in my case I've got 24 pin the the little tab release tab facing up count over from left to right one two three four there's my power on Five is actually a ground or on the pinout graphic that I overlaid, it'll list them as common. That's that's typical for computer stuff. And you just jumper those two together and now the power supply will work. And you can just leave this here. You can touch this with the power supply on. There's no current, no power running through this right here. This is just a jumper to tell the power supply to come on. So there's no current or voltage or anything. You're not gonna shock yourself if you grab this or touch this while the power supply is on. So no worries there, but that's super easy. I just wanted to show there seems to be a bunch of confusion out there how to make this happen. And it's really, really simple. So I wanted to share that with you in the per first part of this video. I need to pause you real quick because I, I need to pull everything else out to get set up to do the bench test for the radio and I'm going to be testing several things so I want to bring you along for that. I've got the radio, the speakers, the backup camera. I've got as I mentioned two switches I'm going to use for um, the switched power which will emulate ignition, another switched power that's going to emulate putting the vehicle into reverse which tells the backup camera to come on and then some how I'm going to wire it all to the radio and we're just going to test and make sure everything works. We're going to plug in my iPod and make sure that works. Maybe even Bluetooth my phone and make sure that works. So um, I'm going to pause you for a second, get everything set up, and I'll be back with you. Welcome back. Been a little while since I've been with you. Remember in the first part I was showing you how to do the power supply paused you, took a few minutes, and hooked up a bunch of wires. I've got you handheld. I'm going to kind of walk around here, explain what I've done, and then put you back on the tripod while I do my bench test. But let me just kind of walk you through. Uh, I, I wasn't going to let the camera run and bore you to death with me just hooking up wires. And what I think I've been successful in doing is I've got 
the wires here hooked up and I'm fairly confident that none of them are touching to where they're going to short out or cause us a problem. So I really don't want to tape all this up since this is just a bench test to make everything, make sure everything works. All of this stuff is eventually going into my Jeep. So um, I'll be doing a separate video, but again, as I mentioned, it's July 18th or so and it's cold. We're about to get a bunch more snow and all that kind of stuff. So I'm not doing that anytime soon. I'm gonna be doing that when the weather breaks. But all right, let me bring you around here and try to walk you around what I've done. My radio is a Pioneer radio. I've and I've done lots and lots of radio installs over the years so confidence level with this is high if you've never done one uh, make just do your homework so you don't mess anything up um, but I've got the Pioneer I've got the MVH 300 EX that's what this radio is and then for my speakers and this is the installation manual I know you hear all the time that focus there you go you know guys get teased all the time about not reading the instructions listen you need to read the instructions make sure you hook things up correctly so you don't fry your radio or your speakers or something like that so all right my speakers the Jeep that I have has six by nine speakers in the front and rear doors so that's what we're replacing these are six by nine kicker CS693 speakers and 6.9 of course is the 6x9 and then 3 is for three-way speakers. Um, they have very nice speakers and made by Kicker and that's what I've chosen to go in there. Um, the speakers I bought for myself. The radio was a Christmas present the over here which I haven't mentioned yet backup that's the backup camera and it is inside a license plate bracket there's the actual see if I can zoom in here that's the actual camera this actually adjusts so once I get it on the vehicle I can adjust it to the angle that I want I think it has 45 degrees worth of adjustment there and I've just got it propped up on a roll of paper towels this little this is just a little LED light that is going to um, we're gonna use that I'll ex kind of explain that to you when I get to that part that's going to simulate our um, reverse light because the reverse when you put the car in reverse that's when the backup camera needs to come on and be displayed on the radio and and got this hooked up so again I've got the, the backup camera got my speakers my radio the power supply that we talked about at in the very first segment of this video I've got ground hooked up and the color of the wires um, again follow the color codes I, I'm fairly sure that most aftermarket radios are pretty consistent in their colors uh, in their coloring so if in my particular case you have a yellow red and black which is constant power switched power and or ignition when you turn your key on and off and then black will be ground and then all of the others there's white green gray and violet or purple which are the speaker wires, speaker connections. So I've got all of that stuff hooked up. Again, I've, I've tapped into the 12 volt and ground from the computer power supply. The other thing that I've put in here that we're going to be using is I've got two, and again, I got you handheld, so I'm trying to keep you in the camera. I've got two 12 volt switches, and that one's on, where I'm gonna flip that to the off position. And I've wired this um, on the off side, and you can see on this particular switch it shows you off to on. So this is the 12 volt feed from the 
power supply. This is the feed out to the radio. So what I'm doing, this is my switched power. So the, the power switch on the back of the computer power supply, that's going to be my constant 12 volts. That's my switched 12 volts. And then this other 12 volt switch that I've wired in is going to simulate or emulate, however you want to look at it, putting the car into reverse to kick on the, the camera. So when I turn this switch on, this will be, okay, now we're in reverse. So the camera should come on, the backup camera should come on, we should see the display on the radio, all that kind of stuff. So I've wired these two switches. Again, constant power, constant 12 volts, switched, 12 volts so this would be like the key when you get in the car and you turn the key on when that goes on is like turning the key on this particular switch when we turn that on that's like putting the car in reverse so that's everything that I have hooked up for that um, the reverse switch runs over the power feed once you turn that on goes over this is the power connector for the backup camera and I also have it wired into this little LED for that to come on like a re our reverse like the reverse lights on the vehicle so this light will come on there's also LEDs on this that should come on but I wired that little LED light kind of like a reverse light and then the other thing that's wired let me find it here so I can kind of explain to you where this the reverse light when that kicks on if you've ever installed an amplifier in a car it has a signal wire so when you turn and that goes off of your switch off of your key switch so when you turn the key on it sends 12 volts all along that signal it radio the the signal wire tells the amplifier to come on it's it's the same exact thing for the backup camera so there's a signal wire here. I can show you this. There's a signal wire, which is this guy right here. And it says right on here. Nope. Oh, of course, it's upside down in the camera. It says reverse gear signal input. And what that is, I've run a wire from here to the positive power side of this re this little light that's our reverse light so when the car is put into reverse this light comes on sends a 12 volt signal back to the radio tells the radio to switch inputs to display whatever the backup camera is seeing to send that display here and then when that reverse light goes off so when we turn our reverse switch or we take the car out of reverse that s signal is no longer there so the radio switches back to its normal display and turns off the the camera so that's kind of more I guess a more winded explanation than I kind of wanted to give but we really needed to do that so all right here we go we're going to test this I'm going to pause you real quick put you back in the tripod and then I'm going to let you watch try to get you at a good angle where you can see everything and I'm gonna just play around with this and see if it works uh, oh the other thing that I mentioned or uh, that I didn't mention I've got the antenna adapter hooked in um, I'm not sure we're gonna pick up radio station with just the antenna the adapter plugged in but we can give that a try see if it picks up anything but let me put you in the tripod and I'll be right back with you. There you go, got you back in the tripod. I'm gonna try not to block your view. You should be seeing most everything there. Um, even the, let me turn you just a little bit. You've got the power supply there, radio speakers, backup camera is over here, which I'm trying to get you in the view there so you can see the backup camera when it comes on 
All right, there you go. I think that's a little better view for you. All right, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to turn on, I'm going to just double check and make sure that none of my wires are touching. Again, I didn't want to tape all this up uh, with electrical tape. So I'm just going to make sure that none of these wires are at a point where they're going to cause us a problem if they're touching something they shouldn't. So everything looks okay there. So let me go ahead. I'm going to turn the power supply on. I've got it plugged in, but in the off position. Again, the jumper that we talked about is in place, so it'll come on. You should see the light there. Nothing else is going to come on yet because that's just the constant power. So yeah, you can see over there the light. I, I tilted the power supply up so you could see the light there, the, the LED light that's inside. Now I'm going to turn our first, turn my first switch on, which should give us power to the radio. This is like me turning the key on in the car. And you can see the radio did come on. It defaults to English. Um, I'm just going to, I have to program everything when I get it in the Jeep. Again, I'm going to do a, an, an entire episode when I install all of this. So I'll bring you along for all of that. But that's going to be a while. All right, so our radio is on. Again, I'm not going to worry about setting the time or anything like that. Um, we know that the radio itself is working. We could probably hit the radio button. Yeah, and I doubt we're going to pick anything up. Oh, there we go. There you go. I don't know if you can... Hopefully you can hear that, but we picked up uh, a radio station there. So... I think what I'm going to... And I have not read the instruction manual, so... I'm going to just switch it so we're not hearing the radio. But that's good because we know this works. We know the speakers work. But uh, now what I'm going to do, you can see the display there, hopefully. Let me just zoom in really quickly so you can see the display that says Bluetooth, right? Now what I'm going to do is, I'll zoom you back out, I'm going to zoom you back out, and then I'm going to turn the other switch on, it's going to emulate, simulate, however you want to look at it, putting the car in reverse. So when I do that, we should get a light here and the camera should come on and the display should change and show us what the camera is seeing. And I think you can see that worked out exactly as it should. And now I've got my light so this is simulating my backup reverse lights. We've got the lights, the LED lights around the actual backup camera there. So that's working great. It's displayed here. Okay, I'm done backing up. So I'm going to put the car in drive, which will turn off the reverse. And now the radio goes back to its normal or normal function that it was on before the backup camera 
came on. So I need to pause you. Um, I did find out I've got an old iPod. I don't know if you can see this or not, but I've got an old iPod. This is a iPod Classic, and I think it's an 80 gig or 160 gig or something. Bunch of music and audiobooks, all kinds of stuff on there, which is awesome for me. But found out that it will not work with the new radio, so I'm going to have to start using my phone for that. So I'm going to take a break here, and I'm going to Bluetooth my phone to the radio, and then I'll bring you back. We'll do some testing. We'll test all the speakers, make sure each speaker and the functions all work. The Bluetooth function works. I may even have my wife call me to see how that works through the radio and all of that. But we're going to do a little more testing. Let me pause you for just a minute to get set up for that and we'll move on. Okay, let me bring you back. Just do final bit of testing here. And we're not going to worry about doing any kind of EQ or anything like that because it's just not the whole point of this was to just test everything and make sure that it works. So I've Bluetoothed my phone here to the radio and that has worked absolutely fine. So I've got just an audiobook on right now. sound right. His footsteps fell more heavily, jauntily, and he whistled. A new guy. He whistled his way to my front door, then fell silent for a moment. And he laughed. I knocked. Kind of put my ear up to each one of the speakers, and all four of the speakers are working beautifully. Um, they're going to sound really, really good once they get inside the doors, and we can put on an I don't know how much uh, YouTube will get on me for some of this, but uh, I can play a little bit of something for you. Um, So there's the music, the EQ, um, you've got different settings in here, you can do custom where you do your own, all kinds of stuff I've got to just again looking at the documentation for the radio, uh, if it's like my other Pioneer stuff there's lots of different settings and all kinds of stuff that you can do. Anyway that just concludes the testing of everything. Everything seems to work fine. Thanks for watching and check back with channel soon and I will get something else posted for you and hopefully it'll be of interest to you and if you like the channel, if you like this video, thumbs up and subscribe, comment, all those kinds of good things and I'll talk to you soon.